Alrighty, good morning everyone. Today is Wednesday, May 13th, uh, 10, 10 a.m. We'll be going to 12.30 a.m. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and go through the announcements real quick. Mm, there it is. All right, so today, we are going to have a quiz and, and, and in other words, an exam review. So the exam is going to be on two sections um, on the functions and exponentials, which you did last week, and the logarithms, which you did this week. So that's exam. So today we're going to be going over the quiz on, on the logs. And as you know, the quiz on the logs will be half of the practice exam. Um, so here's the agenda. Um, right after we check in and announcements and do ask questions, um, we're going to review the quiz and I actually posted up the practice exam on Canvas. It's under files. If you want to print it out, you don't have to, but you can. Um, and we're going to go over the latter half of the practice exam. And that latter half of the practice exam will be the quiz, basically. Then a 10 minute break. Um, and then we have some student spotlights. Um, Paloma, Sophia, and I think Jesus are going to be um, doing their spotlight today. Seth will be doing his presentation. And next week, I have Angela and Angelica uh, signed up for the student spotlight. So if there's any of, one of you guys that need to do, still do it, let me know. Next Wednesday is the last opportunity to do this. I think next Wednesday is the last opportunity. Um, we'll continue our log functions review and we'll end around 1230. All right, so just a quick check-in. Um, there's not too many people online today, so this might go a little bit fast. Um, just something fun to think about um once everything opens up so who knows when right but once it does i think i heard that la is extending the stay-at-home order for three more months my goodness um and orange county is going to be announcing theirs today so we'll see what happens but hey it's nice to dream and think ahead of time um where's the first place you want to go once everything opens up so go ahead and think about that where would you want to go once everything opens up um, for me, the first place I want to go is my second home, which is Hawaii. So um, I go there several times a year, and I was supposed to go there earlier, um, but things happen, and hopefully once things open up, I, I really miss the islands a lot. So Hawaii is my location. And yours doesn't have to be somewhere far away. It could just be like a restaurant or something you want to do or whatnot. So um, Garrett, let me start with you. Where is the first place you want to go once everything opens? Well, I said it last time. I want to go to Catalina. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Wait, did I have the same question last time? No, you had mentioned that you were going to ask it. Oh, okay. The last one had to do with Mother's Day, but you oh. had mentioned that we were going to. That's right. Okay, great. I'm like, wait, I, I remember this answer. <laughs> um, Jessica. Um. I would like to go because I was supposed to go to Seattle, but then with the whole court, like coronavirus thing, I had to put that on hold. But I have like these, um, they basically refunded me and I can basically just spend the money wherever I want to go. So I changed my mind. I actually want to try to go to Chicago or New York soon. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe even, I really want to go to Disneyland too. So <laughs> those are things I want to go. <laughs> like the big cities. Yeah. Oh, I've never flown, so. Oh, you've never flown before? Flown, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. I have family in Chicago, and I was supposed to visit them um, in April, and tickets went down to, like, $36 round trip. <laughs> I saw that, too. Oh, wow. Well, I hope you get to go. Me, too. <laughs> uh, Melissa. Um, I think to go visit my grandparents in Mexico. Oh, okay. Great. Right. Um, Angelica? Here you go, buddy. Can you get us here? Angelica, can you hear us? Um, I want to go out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you want to go out to eat? I want to go to Cheesecake Factory. Oh, Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. They're open for takeout, right? They are, but I like going there and just like kind of just hanging out, you know? Oh, right. The ambiance is different, right? Yeah. Which one do you go to? Uh, sometimes I go to the one like near downtown Disney or the one in Cerritos so if I'm gonna just, if it's just random. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 
Just breathe. Hi. Hi. Where's the first place you want to go once everything opens? Um, honestly, like any amusement park, like Six Flags or Knott's or Disney, anything like that. Oh, do you have a favorite one? Six Flags. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> um, how about Stephanie? Um, to the mall. The mall? Yeah. Any particular store or anything to the mall? Maybe Vict Victoria's Secret. <laughs> cool. Um, Anthony. Uh, I would probably like to go to Mexico. Mexico as well? Do you have family there as well? Yeah. He wants more oatmeal? Here, he can have a mic. No, I want more peanut butter. Okay, let me give me one second. Okay, sorry guys. Here, give this a story. Here we go. So it sounds like a lot of you guys have family in Mexico that you guys are missing, huh? Um, how about Sophia? Uh, it's not really a place, but uh, I just want to see my family because we have a lot of birthdays in summer for our family that we won't get to celebrate. So that's what I want to do. Oh, right. So you guys have not been seeing each other because of the quarantine, is that why? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I just saw my, hung out with my family for the first time yesterday. We went to the beach. So it was the first time in two months, so it was very special. <laughs> um, Suzette? He does not want he does not school. I'm sorry? Does that can you say it again? School, I guess. Oh, you can't wait to go to school? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. He does not want Okay, then okay, I'll have to make him a new one. Right now I can't. Um, Diana? Um, I think I would go to Utah to visit my um uh, my aunt and my cousin and my friends. Oh, okay. Wow, Utah's beautiful. Yeah. Lots of nature there. Um, Seth. Um, I would probably just go back to the gym. That's why I'm kind of missing the gym. That's wow. it. Right. Right. Um, Milani. Hi. Um. Uh, well, I guess it's not where I would want to go. Is I'm missing my daughter. She's stuck in Singapore. In Singapore, oh my gosh. Uh -huh. That's where my family's from. She's going to school out there with, and she's living with my sister. Uh -huh. So yeah, I just want her home. <laughs> oh, sorry, she can't come back, right? Right now, she can't come? Yes. Now it's not a good idea for her to travel. Oh, wow. But she's safe with my sister, so everything is okay. <laughs> That's good to know, good. Yeah. Um, Paloma? Yes. Did you go yet, Paloma? Uh, I'm sorry? Did you go yet? Did she answer the question yet? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Um, well, in California, I would want to go uh, up north uh, to uh, Monterey Bay. Oh, okay. Because she's over there, too, for, uh, for school. So okay. I pretty much went there. I'm sorry, who did you say is up there in Monterey Bay? Uh, my cousin. Oh, cousin. Oh, okay. Got it. You could technically drive there. <laughs> um, how about Stephanie Garcia? Did you go yet? Um, no, I haven't. Um, well, there's like a lot of places I want to go to once everything clears up. Mm -hmm. But the main thing I want to go to is the beach. The beach? Oh. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the beach. I like going there like in summer. Right. Um, but yeah, I can't wait till it, um, that opens up. Which beach you go to? Um, I must. I mostly go like any beaches. My favorite one is the one in Belmont Shore. Oh, Belmont Shore. Mhm. Oh, okay. I think the Orange County beaches are now open. Just heads up. Oh, there. Are? Oh, okay. I went to um, Corona del Mar last night. Oh, okay. I saw sunset. It was really pretty. Yeah. So some of the Orange County ones, only if you feel comfortable, of course. Okay, yeah. Different um, comfort level with it, but mm -hmm. cool. It sounds like a lot of you. Uh, did I did I miss anyone? Did we get everyone? 
Well, thank you for sharing, you guys. It, it saddens me and also warms my heart to hear of the things that you guys are looking forward to, from ranging from visiting families to um, flying to doing mundane things that we took for granted before, like going to the mall or the gym. So I hope those things will come into fruition soon for you guys. And I can't wait to hear about it once it does. All right, so homework for tonight or today is there's an online quiz today that's open until midnight. So hopefully once we have this class, you guys can go straight onto your quiz and do it and find that it's actually pretty simple because we would have, would have covered it in class. And then the practice exam will be open today as well. And it'll be open until, um, oh no, I'm sorry, it's open tomorrow, I guess. I forgot when I've opened it. It's open sometime. And then it's gonna be open up until Sunday midnight. Um, and that practice exam, half of it is on the logs and half of it is on functions and exponentials. So again, um, hopefully it'll be kind of a, a easy thing because we would have already covered a lot of it already. Um, and then the next DLA is due on Monday. And again, it's flexible. You just need to make sure you do five by the end of the semester. And I know Seth, you had asked if uh, you've missed an SLA in the past, can you make it up? And the answer is yes. Um, this, you just have to make sure you do five by the end of the semester. It's worth 5% of your grade. Each one is worth 1%. So if you have 84% in the class, if you do one, you get 85%. If you do all five, you get 89%, right? So you just add 1% to your grade for each SLAs that you do. So I think you had asked if you don't do one, will it cause you to fail the class? No, because it's 1%, right? Unless you're at 70% or 69% and you needed that 1% to pass the class, right? So each one is worth five, 1%, a total of 5%. So easy 5%, that's like half of a grade, right, to, to, your, um, to your score. Um, just a reminder, again, student spotlights and group presentations today and next Wednesday is our last time to do it. Um, SLAs, I already mentioned that. Gradebook, actually they just emailed, the Mass Success and Center and just and emailed and me, a list of students who just did their SLAs this past week. So I'm going to be updating that after this class. Um, things to look forward to just for the next three weeks, we're practically done. Week 16 next week is the last full week that we have. Monday will be the live exam on Zoom. Um, and again, same story, after the exam, you're gonna do the exam corrections and give it to me. I bet Tuesday, I meant to say Wednesday, before class on Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, we'll have another Zoom on our last chapter, which is conics. And we're just gonna have one Zoom on that because it's only eight topics. So that one Zoom on that last chapter. Um, the following week, Monday, is a Memorial Day, so we won't have any Zoom on that day, and then We'll have one more last Zoom on that Wednesday to probably have a quiz or review the quiz for Conix. You have a Conix quiz next week. Shh. That's week 17, I'm sorry. And then after that, we have the final exam. So things are moving by really fast. A reminder, Garrett's tutorial is there on Discord, 12 to 4 p.m., Monday to Thursday. Reminder that if you miss any material, if you have questions on any topics, you could always go on my YouTube channel and look for that topic. Um, and actually before we do that, or actually, yeah, so this is a review of log functions. This is what you have your quiz on. It's only 14 topics. Um, this is a kind of summary of all the topics. We did relationship between logs and exponentials where you chop a log. Right? That's where my analogy of Abraham Lincoln chop, chopping a log and the relationship between logs and exponentials, you need to know how to go from one to the other. And as you can see with the analogy of chopping the log is actually pretty easy to do. Um, use the properties of logs to condense and expand the logs. And I made an analogy of an accordion where you kind of pull it apart, pull it together, pull it apart, pull it together. So there were three properties you needed to know. Um, the change of base formula, there's only one problem on that in your homework. Solving log equations, so we did that on Monday. There were three log equations that we did. Solving exponential equations, there were two methods. One was the easy one, and then if the easy one doesn't work, then you do the second method. And then the last thing we did was we did continuous exponential word problem, where we applied that to a real life situation. Alrighty. 
So before we start on the quiz, does anyone have any questions about anything? About the material or anything you have questions on? I have a quick question. Do you know for the final if it's going to be on a Monday or a Wednesday? Um, I have not decided yet. Um, do you guys have a preference? I would say Monday. Monday? How about the rest of you guys? Any preference? Monday or Wednesday? What's the question? For the final. If you guys want it Monday or Wednesday. Wednesday. I would say Monday. I would say Monday too. Does anyone want Wednesday or are, are you guys good with, with Wednesday to get it over with? Wednesday um, would be six, right? Okay. I would appreciate Wednesday, but I don't really mind. Okay. Um, maybe I'll have, yeah, let me figure it out. Let me figure it out. Um, I'm, I'm leaning more towards Monday, but we need, I might do two of them. So I'll keep you guys posted. And again, if, feel free to let me know if you guys have a strong preference and maybe I'll, I'll take a vote next time for that. All right, are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, I had a question about the homework. Um, I don't have it. Let me see if I could find a question, but it's about log uh, logarithm of power. Okay. Um, I just don't know how to really solve that one. A log. So if you have an, an example. Um, yeah. Let me see. The log rhythm of a power, is that what you said, Paloma? Yes. Um, yeah, if you have an example, then I could do that example. Mm. I'm not sure what you mean when you say log rhythm of a power. Oh. No, never mind, I do not. No? Okay. Well, if you find one, feel free to take a look and then let me know. And as we okay. do the quiz, it might come up as well. Okay. I have one from homework that I didn't understand. Um, I do have it if maybe you could solve it. Sure. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's log five, um, and then it's parentheses x plus seven, parentheses equals one, uh, with the minus sign, log five, parentheses x plus three, parentheses. Okay, um, can you show that to me on the screen by any chance? Oh. Yeah, of course. Sorry. I mean, it's on a messy piece of paper and I was working on it, but I didn't get it right. So maybe hopefully you could see it. Um, so I think it's this one right here. So log x plus seven mm -hmm. plus log x plus three. Oh, no, no, no. So I'm trying to see. Sorry. So log base five x plus seven is uh -huh. to one minus log base five x plus three. Yeah. Okay, can I see what you did so far? Can um, I only got there and then I looked at the explanation and went on to the next one. So it's just, that's what I have there. But I don't think it was correct. Okay, well, I see what you did is just first you brought the log over to the other side, which mm -hmm. is good. Right, so you brought the log over to the other side. You added it to the other side to get all the logs together, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next step you want to do is you want to combine the logs. So can anyone help... Um, uh, can you continue to put that up, Jessica? Okay, yeah. Can you help Jessica with what the uh, what she did wrong on that last step? What she should be doing. Can anyone help Jessica on that? Uh, isn't she supposed to distribute? Okay, and why would you distribute? No, wait. Don't you multiply them? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. So you're adding two logs to condense it. You want to multiply it. Okay. And I think that's the one that, um, yeah, and then I see that you had divided it instead. You want to multiply it instead. Okay. Yeah. So do you, want to, do you want me to do that with you right now? If you could. If not, I can just do it afterwards now that I know that I have to multiply instead of dividing it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I could do it real quick right now. Um, here we go. Oops. Okay, much clear. So can you see that? So this is where the problem, and then you added, you added the, lo the log to one side, right? 
So, and then now we want to multiply it. So we want to multiply this. You want to multiply these two because we want to condense the logs, right? If you want to condense the logs, you want to do multiplication. And let's go ahead and multiply that, right? So if you multiply this, we get, what do we get when we foil that? X squared plus 10X plus 21. All right, plus 10X plus 21. And Garrett pointed out to me that this is the one we did in class on Wednesday. So I do have it on Zoom as well, recorded, in case you need to see it slower. Okay, now that you multiply it, now what do we do? You bring over the one to the other side. All right, so we're gonna chop, we're gonna change it. We're gonna change it to exponential, right? So to change it to exponential, you start with a base. You swing your X to the other side. So five to the one is equal to, and then you chop down, right? So kind of like the Abraham Lincoln analogy of chopping the wood. So five to the one power is equal to X squared plus 10 X plus 21. And notice that this is a quadratic, the highest power is two. So since the highest power is two, we want to, we realize that this is a quadratic. And how do we solve a quadratic? Uh, you make everything equal to zero. Right, Every, make everything equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract five on both sides. Oops. So when I do that, we get x squared plus 10x plus 17. So now that it's equal to zero, what do we do? Xbox method? Yep, Xbox method. So let's go ahead and Xbox this. What two numbers multiply to give us seven, one, two, oh, sorry, it's not 17. It's one, two, three, four, five, 16, 16 x squared plus 10x plus 16. What two numbers multiply to give us 16? Two and eight. Right, two and eight. And when you check it, it does add up eight x plus two x gives you 10 x. So when you x box it, x plus two and x plus eight. Is that okay so far, Jessica? Yeah. Then you end up with a negative two and a negative eight, right? Cool. So doing this, property the zero product property we get negative two and negative eight and then the last step is you always want to check your work for extraneous solutions so extraneous solutions are solutions when you plug it in if you get a negative if you get a log of a negative number that's an extraneous solution you do not include it so i explained that in the previous zoom if you guys want to um, get more details on that but we plug negative two in here we plug negative two in the original problem negative two plus seven gives me negative five, right? So log of a negative five is an extraneous, does not work. You can't have log of a negative five. Positive five, negative oh, two. I'm sorry, that's a positive five, just kidding. Negative two plus seven is a positive five, so that's okay. Negative two plus three is a positive one, so that's okay. I'm sorry, yeah, so that's comes a positive. So log of a, of a positive number is okay. So X negative two is one of the solutions. If you plug negative eight into here, this is what I meant. Negative eight plus seven will give us a negative one. So you cannot have log of a negative number. So therefore, negative eight is an extraneous solution. So we do not include that in our solution. The only solution is negative two. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions on anything? Any other questions? I had a question on the one of the word problems. Okay. Can I go ahead and um, share it right here? Sure. Go. I'm sorry. Who is this? Angelica. Angelica. Yes. Show. Go ahead and show me the problem. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. All right. Can you read it for me real quick? Suppose that number that the number of bacteria in a certain population increases according to the continuous exponential exponential growth model. A sample of 2,400 bacteria selected from the population reached the size of 3,099 bacteria in six hours. Find the hourly growth rate parameter. Great. So this is a continuous exponential growth model. So. Right away, when you hear that, when you read that, Angelica, what's the formula that should pop up to your head when you get A equals P and then E plus um, P to the R and T power? Great. 
So A equals to PE raised to the RT power. Good. So that's the big formula you need for a continuous exponential growth. Now we just need to plug things in. So let's go ahead and read, go through this again. A sample of 2,400 bacteria selected from this population reach 3,099 in six hours. So what does 2,400 represent out of those letters? The P. The P. Great. So that's where we initially started off with. So 2,400 is the P, right? Because that's what we started off with. So what is 3,099? The A. 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 Right. Because that's the amount that we ended with, right? So P is the initial and the A is what you end with. So P stands for principal, the initial. Six hours. What does six hours represent? The time. Time, right? Is everyone okay with that so far? So it says find the hourly growth rate. So what are they asking for? They're asking for the R. They're asking for the R, right? The rate. So it says the hourly growth rate. So we're looking for the R. So is everyone okay with all that so far? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and change screens real quick so that um, um, one second. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change screens. Oops. Okay, so here is that form, that problem that um, Angelica just read, and what we had discussed that A is this, P, T, and point R. So when I plug it in, I get 3,099 is equal to 2,400, E to the R times T. Well, R times T is 6R, right? So R times T is 6 times R, right? So I have 6R here. Everyone okay with that so far? Yes. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to solve for R, right? That's what I want to solve for. So first I'm going to actually maybe bring the I'm going to divide this 3,099 divided by 2,400 is equal to e to the 6r. Um, does that give me a nice number, 3,099 over 2,400? Anyone have a calculator? Don't you have a natural log? Right, but I'm just wondering if that's a, a nice number. Let me... It's 1.29. It's 1.29? Yeah. Okay, and it's actually a big long number, one point two nine one two five. So we could leave we could leave it that or write write this down. So I'm gonna write one point two nine one two five. It doesn't matter whether you leave it like this or like this, but since this number is finite, meaning it has an ending to it, I just write down the whole number. If it was some really, really big number that went on and on forever, I'm just gonna keep it as this because I don't want to round anything, right? I don't want to round anything until the very end. So in this case, I didn't round anything. I just left it as is. All right. And then I heard Anthony say, well, don't we log both sides? And the answer is yes, because the notice that the R is in the exponent. We want the exponent, the R to be outside to not, to no longer be in the exponent. So we don't want this in the exponent. So we're going to log both sides. And because I see an E, I'm going to actually do natural log of both sides because natural log of E is just going to equal to one. So whenever I see an E, I have, I have a choice of either logging L-O-G or natural logging L-N both sides. So I chose to natural log both sides, but you could log as well, whichever one you want. But I just chose natural log because it's a little bit easier because we know that natural log of E is just equal to one. If you put this in your calculator, it's just equal to one. So whenever I see an E, I decide to natural log instead. So once I natural log both sides, now I could use a third rule of exponent, or I'm sorry, of logs, where I bring the exponent out to the outside here. So the 6R, I could pull it out in the front, 6R times natural log E. And that was the reason why we logged it. We logged it so that we can use the third property to bring the exponent to the front. And that's the power of logs. When you have an exponent, you can bring it out to the front when you have a log. Well, now we know that natural log E is just one. So I have natural log of 1.29125 is equal to six R. 
Is everyone okay so far? And yeah. Jessica, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, and I saw Jessica's thumb up. And now, last but not least, I solve for R by dividing both sides by six. So this becomes a one here. So natural log, so I have this number here. I'm gonna put natural log LN, and then I'm gonna put second answer, parentheses. So that gives me the answer that I just wrote up there. Natural log of that answer, and then I'm gonna put equal, and I'm gonna put divided by six. So again, notice I'm not rounding anything to the very last step. And here it says 0 0.04. So R is equal to 0 0.04. And Angelica, did it say what decimal place it wants to throw up anything? Let me go back to it. To the nearest hundred. To the nearest hundred. Okay. So 0 0.4260, blah, blah, blah. R, right? But then um, R is normally a percentage, right? So here R is a, is a decimal. You want to change it to a percent. So how do you change it to a percent? You move the decimal how many times? Two times. Yeah, twice to the right to make it a percent. So to make a percent, I move it twice to the right, so I get 4.26%, and that's to the nearest 100, because it's two decimal places. That becomes your answer. So the rate that this thing is growing is at 4.26%. Is that okay, Angelica? Yeah. Okay. Great, great question. Any other question? All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about the quiz. So I'm gonna screen share and put the quiz or the practice exam on here for you guys. And this is the one that you guys have, have on Canvas as well. So as you can see, the practice exam has uh, 15 questions. So that means your exam has 15 questions as well, very similar. Questions number one through eight are going to be about exponential and logs, I mean exponential and functions from the previous chapter. And starting at question nine through 15, that's what um, your quiz is gonna be on and the half of your exam. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, there's about, let me see, how many of us are there? There's 20 of us in here. So I'm gonna split us up into two breakout sessions uh, for us to work on these. Um, number, no, number nine, actually, let's do number nine together. So I hope you guys all have a pencil and pen on hand. So we'll, we'll talk it through. Let's look at number nine. Can I write on this? I don't know if I can write on this. So looking at number nine here, it says simplify your answer as much as possible. So here, this is a log. So we're gonna use the chopping the log thing, right? Where we're gonna change this to an exponential. So change to an exponential. So when we change this to an exponential, what do we start off with first? So do you guys remember? How do you chop the uh, chop a log? Base. You start the base. Start, start with the base. So we start with the base, and the base is thirty-two raised to what power? One fifth. Raised to the one fifth. So we start with thirty-two, then we raise it to the one fifth. So the care, this care signs means raised to the one fifth power. And then we set this equal to x. Yeah. All right. So that's what happens when you chop the log. I wish I could write this in mathematics form. But 32 raised to the one fifth is equal to x. So here's what, so we need to just solve for x, right? So what's 32 to the one fifth power? So 32 to the one fifth power is the fifth root of 30. Of, so x is equal to the fifth root of 32. What number multiplies by itself five times gives you 32. Is it two? Two, right. So the answer here is two. Does anyone need me to write this out more clearly or is that okay? Or would you just rather me write it out? I, 
I I would rather you write it out, but I'm not sure how everybody else goes. Yeah, can you write out? Sure thing, chicken wing. Um, uh-huh. Let's go ahead and let me stop the share. And I'm going to spotlight my video. So here in this problem, we had, what was it? Um, long. Um, 32. Log 32x is equal to one fifth. So here we want to change to exponential. So if you guys remember, changing to log to exponential. If I have this, oops. Well, to change to exponential, we always start with a base, right? We always start with a base. We swing our axe to the other side to the highest exponent c, and then we chop down to get the other set one b. So same story. So here we're going to start with our base, 32. We are going to chop. We're going to swing our axe to the other side so we get to the one-fifth power. It's equal to, and then we chop down to get x. So now we want to just solve for x. Well, x, x equals to this. 32 to the one-fifth is the same thing, if you guys remember exponential form. I'm sorry, uh, radical form. 32 to the one power, and the five in the denominator is just the, it's just the index. So I change this to radical form. So 32 to the one fifth, x, the, the five is just the index. And that's asking me what number multiplied by itself five times will give me 32? And the answer is two, because since, 2 to the fifth power gives you 32. So this is a review of radicals. And worst case scenario, if you guys want, you guys could just, just check your work. You could plug this into your calculator. X equals to 32 to the 1 fifth. You could put 32, caret sign, and then 1 divided by 5, put it in parentheses. So 32 raised to the 1 divided by 5, which is a fraction, press enter, the answer is 2. So again, you could just use your calculator if you forget how to do radicals. Okay, everyone okay with that? Any questions? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go back to our practice exam. So now let's go ahead and look at number 10 and 11. Well, let's look at number 10 and 11, yeah. So 10 is to expand the log so like the accordion that goes stretches out, go ahead and expand that. And then 11 is use change of base. So I'm gonna put this into um, two breakout sessions and have you guys work on this in your breakout sessions. And I'll bring this back together after this. And Garrett and I will be in one or the other. And actually Garrett, I need to make you a co-host as well. Did everyone get a chance to write down the problem? I'm just missing number 11. Okay. Sorry, what was the answer for number nine again? Number nine was two. Oh, okay. Number nine is two. Anyone get a chance to write down the problems? It's also on your, um, on your canvas as well. All right, creating a breakout session. See you guys soon. Well, problem number 10 here, um, the answer is, I, I heard um, in our group, um, we had Melissa and Sophia share their answers. So problem number 10, the answer is five log Z plus log Y. So the five, Z five times Y, since it's multiplication, we make it into addition, right? So log Z plus log Y, right? We make it into addition when we're trying to expand the log. And then the five up in the exponent, we bring it out to the front to make it a coefficient. Is everyone okay with number 10? I know I was in breakout session one. How about breakout session two? You guys okay with that? All good in the hood? Any questions? Um, those who I spoke with, they got the same thing. Okay, great. 
And then number 11, um, we got this in session up, breakout session one. How about part two, breakout session two, were you guys able to get 0.861? Yeah. You guys all got it? Great. Any questions on that? Um, and just for the sake of those who are not on Zoom with us right now, um, I'm going to share those who might be um, looking at this later. Um, in this problem, log base five of four, they asked us to round it to the nearest thousandth, so therefore we need to put it into the, the calculator. So in order to put it into the calculator, the calculator only has log base 10. So calculators have log base 10, it's not log base four. So to change a base that's not 10 to make it a 10, so to, if a base is not 10 and you wanna make it a 10, then you use this formula here. So this is a change of base formula. So the change of base formula says this B divided by the, the, the former base. So here, to change this into log base 10, I put the four divided by the five. So when we plug this into our calculator, log of four divided by log five, we get 0.86135, yada, yada, and round it to the nearest, um, net round it to the nearest thousands is 0.861. Great. So let's go ahead and continue on with the next problem. So the next problem here is number um, 12 and 13. So let me give you guys a chance to copy that down. Number 12 is solving an equation with logs. And then number 13 is solving exponential with logs. So go ahead and work on that. I'm gonna write down, remind you guys of the steps to do this. So reminder that the steps of solving log equations Remember step one? Does anyone remember what step one is? Don't you um, bring all the logs together? Gather all logs to one side of the equation. So bring all the logs together, right? And then, oops. Hmm. And then after you do that, step two. You condense all the logs to one log. Condense the logs to one log. Good. And we're gonna use the properties of logs, right? Yeah. I like the online music in the back. <laughs> So after all the logs are together, what do you do after all the logs are together? You change the log expression to an exponential. Change log expression to an exponential. So again, before I could um, chop, chop, use a, chop the wood, right? I love the ambiance music. <laughs> Makes math seem so peaceful. <laughs> and then the last step would be, or step four is then once you do that, you get a quadratic or a linear, and you're gonna solve for x. Quadratic or a linear. Last step is always check for extraneous solution. Those are hopefully a good summary of, um, of what to do. So go ahead and work on those five steps with your group. Thank mm -hmm. you.
right, Victor, help me out. What do I do first? Um, the first thing you do is you move the the log two x plus five to the left. Okay, and when you move it, how do you move it? You add it to both sides, Great. so it cancel out on the right. Great. Everyone okay with step one, moving all the logs to one side? Perfect. All right, next step. How about um, Stephanie, help me out. What do I do with the next step? Stephanie Herrera or Stephanie Garcia, either one. Um, what you do next is you write out log um, square two. Mm -hmm. Uh, parenthesis, and then you put another parenthesis, x plus 5, or 8, either or is fine. Okay. And x plus 5, parenthesis equals 2. Perfect. So now we condense the logs, and as Stephanie said, when we condense the log, we're going to have to multiply these two together, right? So we multiply these two together, what do we get when we multiply these two together? Does, does anyone boil it out? You get x squared plus 13x plus 40. Great. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions on step two? All right. How about step three? How about um, Jessica? Can you help me out with that? Um, I haven't gotten to that part because I got confused. Um, I'm assuming the next step we could do is to get rid of the log base. Right. Too. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that base of two goes over to the other two. Mm -hmm. And then would you go mm -hmm. ahead and just multiply that two, that two to the second power? I'm not too sure where I go from there. Yep, you're very close. Okay, so now when we change this to exponential form, we start with the base, mm -hmm. we go to the other side, and then we drop down to the side. So we start off with two. We raise okay. the second power and we chop down to the other side. Now you got rid of the log, like you said. Okay. So this two squared becomes four is equal to x squared plus 13x plus 40. Okay. Great, so that's step three. Does anyone have any questions up to step three? Alrighty, how about uh, Seth? Can you help me out with step four? What do I do after this? Um, next, you have to find, you have to split up the, the quadratic, quad, quadratic equation okay. into x plus 9 and x plus 4. Okay. x plus 9. X oh, plus sorry. Nine. Um, subtract 4 to the other side. Okay, good. So we want to subtract 4 to the other side for to set it equal to 0. Yep. Okay. And then you set it equal to x plus 9 and x plus 4. Right, so using, using the x box. Does anyone have any questions with how Garrett, or I'm sorry, how um, Seth got this? <clears throat> Is everyone okay with factoring it? Perfect. Um, how about Noemi? What do we do after this? And plug it in. Okay. What, what is, I'm sorry, keep going. Do we plug in the nine and the four into the into the x? And the, and the beginning of the problem? Okay, so first we want to solve for x first, right? So I think you said it was nine and four. It's actually not nine and four. We mm -hmm. want to use the zero product property. So what is what is nine and I'm sorry, I think you said it. What did you say? Negative nine. Good. Negative nine and? Negative four. Okay. Negative nine and negative four. Great. And then I think you say you plug it into the original to check for extraneous solutions, right? Yes. Okay. So um, how about Margo? Can you help me out? Do both of these answers work when you plug it in for extraneous solutions or are they, do they not work? Um, 
You need help, Marta? Yeah, I do, because I'm kind of confused with, like, the negative part. Sure. Are you okay with x equals negative 9 and negative 4? Yeah. Okay. I'm just confused so, with the plugging the negative part. Oh, so you plug it into the original problem. Okay. Negative 9, let's plug mm -hmm. negative 9 to the original, and if you get a log of a negative number, then you say it's extraneously mm -hmm. negative work. Mm -hmm. So if you plug negative 9 into the original, will that work? Four. Um, eight. Four. So negative nine plus eight will give me negative one. Negative one. Can you have a log of a negative number? No. No. That does not work. So that's not an extraneous solution. How about negative four? We plug negative four in here. What do we get? You get one. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You get negative four plus eight. You get four. Right, and you get log of a positive number, is that okay? Yeah. That's fine. Okay, how about this one? How about if you plug negative four in here? You get a positive one. Right, so it works, right? Yeah. Good, so the answer is x equals to negative four. Nice work, you guys. Does anyone have any questions on that? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and look at the next problem. So now let's look at number 13. So number 13 here is what we call an x an exponential. So remember that there are two methods. So there was method one, and then there was method two. So method one, does anyone remember what method one is? What do you think? Um, it says that method one is taking the bases so that they're the same, they compare the exponents. Good. So method one is um, create common bases so that we can compare. Great. So 16 and 32 are the bases in this problem. Can I create common bases with that? Yes. And what can we create common bases to be? Two. All right, so 16 can have a common base of 2, and 32 can have a common base of 2. So let's give you guys a chance to work on that. All right, so let's take a look at this problem now. So I heard you guys both say that you, got, you guys mentioned that you wanted a common base of 2. What mm -hmm. power will give me 16? Four. Two to the fourth power will give me sixteen. So two to the fourth power will give me sixteen, and then we need a new one. Two to what power give me thirty-two? Five. Great. Is everyone okay with that? Changing the bases. Yes. Yeah. Right. Since that's the case, now I'm going to compare the exponents. Mm -hmm. Did you get an answer, or what did you guys end up doing? Distribute the four. Negative four x plus four equals five. Can you subtract four to both sides? And then I'll equal one. Okay. So x equal to one over negative four. Right. Or negative one fourth. Yeah. The negative yeah. Four. Great. That becomes the answer. Awesome. Awesome. Everyone okay with number thirteen? Changing the bases. All right. So go ahead. And um, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen again. Now let's go ahead and look at question number 14. So question number 14 here says to, again, solve for x. So this is, again, exponential function because notice that the variable is in the exponent, both on number 13 and 14. 
the variable is in the exponent. So since the variable is in the exponent, we're going to have to use method one or method two again. So here in this problem, can we use method one? No. No. Why not? Because there's, they don't have a sim, I guess they don't have a base in common or they don't have something in common. Right. Good job, Jessica. So five and three, they don't have common bases, right? Method two then is to do what? What's the, so this doesn't work. So if method one doesn't work, what do we do? You apply log to both sides. Right. Apply log to both sides. Great. So once we apply log to both sides, why, why is it neat that if we apply log, what does applying log to both sides do? It brings the exponent forward yep. to the front. By doing so, we can bring the exponent out. Right. So let me give you guys a chance to do method two. So. Go ahead and work on that and then we'll come back together and discuss. Hmm, alrighty, so this last problem here, or not last problem, the second to last problem here, I heard you guys say that we can't do method one since we can't change the basis to be the same. So instead we're gonna log both sides. And notice I put a parenthesis around those exponents. And because we log both sides, what happens next? Anybody help me out? So you're going to put the x minus 3 in front of the log 5? Great. <clears throat> Great. So we use the third properties of logs to bring the exponent out to the front. Great job. Now what? And then you're going to um, distribute. All right, so let's try distributing. So we distribute, what do we get? X log 5 mm -hmm. minus 3 log 5. OK, now what? Would you bring the log three over to the other side? Right. Well, we want to isolate our x, right? Want x to be sitting by itself, so we're gonna the bring the three log five to the other side, right? So I'm gonna add three log five to both sides. So when we do that, we end up getting. So I'll write it here. We end up getting x log five. This cancels out is equal to log three plus three log five. <clears throat> is everyone okay with that so far? Any questions? All right, so here's my x. So what's my last step? Divide by the log five. Okay, so divide everything by log five. So as a result, you should get this as your final answer. Um, and actually, what is this problem actually said to go ahead and round your answer to the nearest um, hundredth place. So we want to make sure we plug this into our calculator and round our answer to the nearest hundredth place. So go ahead and plug it in. Let's see what you guys get. Um, whenever I plugged it into the calculator for Alex, I didn't get the answer, but when I did on the Alex calculator, it got the right answer. So I don't know how, if I was doing it wrong on my own calculator. So when you put it on your calculator, it doesn't work? It came out like a slightly different answer. Okay, I'm sorry, who's speaking right now? Suzette. Suzette, um, can you screen share your calculator with me? What that has to do in calculator design, you're limited on like memory. 
and so the computer is going to have more memory and so it's getting a more finer precision so you're, you're just it, there's some rounding going on in the calculator so you're just getting a rounding error oh okay and that has to do with hardware design oh okay so is that do you have a calculator with you in front of you by any chance yeah can you show it to me on your screen Okay, uh, well, let's see if I could. <clears throat> I think it's because on the Alex, it allows you to put it as a fraction when you put divide. Right. I'm not sure if they had to do with it. Really, I have a similar calculator as yours. I was able to get the right answer with my calculator. Yeah. Go, let's go ahead and put this in your calculator. Put log three. So put log three and then it's going to open up a parentheses right so close the parentheses once you're done with that mm -hmm. and then plus three log five and when it opens up the parentheses for five make sure you close the parentheses as well is that okay so far yeah okay and then now and i'm going to go ahead and pin my video so you can see what i'm doing so log three plus three log five. If you put divide by log five right now, it's not going to give you the right answer. Oh, okay. yeah, that's probably what I was doing wrong. That's not what you, what you might be doing because if you put divide by log five, it's only dividing the second fraction, the second, the second um, expression by log five. But you want to divide the whole thing by log five. So if you put divide by log five right now, you're going to get the wrong answer. Oh. So enter, so you have an answer, and then divide by log five. I'm glad you asked because, yeah, that, that could be a very common error. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then she should get 3.68 since I want you to round it to the nearest 100. So 3.68 is the final answer. So everyone, if, when you're putting in your calculator, make sure you put the top and then press enter and then divide the by the bottom. Because if you push divide by log five up here, it's just dividing this one by log, by log five. Unless you put parentheses around the entire numerator and then push log five, then that'll work. But if you don't put parentheses, then you need to at least push enter and then divide. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Professor, can we do it another way and still get the same answer? What's your other way of doing it? I did it um, where, you know, before you distribute it, I didn't distribute. I just divided log five to log three. Yep. And then. Um, so you did X minus three, and then you had log three divided by log five. Yes. Uh huh. And then I added the plus three to the other side. Yep. And I get 3.68. Yep. So you could have done this way as well. Okay. I did it that way, but as I was looking at yours, I thought I was wrong. Oh, okay. But I guess I just got it mixed up, so okay. Okay. I could do it that way or that way. Okay. Yeah, either one would be fine. Okay. If you pull that into your calculator, you'll get the same answer. Great. Good. I'm glad you mentioned that. And Did yet, you notice if you just split the first answer into fractions, two separate fractions, mm -hmm. you'll see that you'll get to the one that you got. Right. Because the log fives will cancel out. You, so you split these two into two separate fractions, like Garrett said, you get log three over log five, plus three log five over log five, and the log fives would cancel out, so you're only left with three. So same answer, right? All righty, great job with that. Let's go ahead and um, before we do the last, um, it's 11.37. Do you guys need a break or do you guys want to keep going? Does anyone need a break? No. Good? Okay. Yeah. If you guys don't need a break, um, let's go ahead and keep going. And then after this, we'll go straight into the student spotlights and the, um, and the what do you call it, the, um, the group presentation. So last problem here is number 15. So this is a Word problem, so very similar to some of the questions you guys asked me in the beginning of class today.
So the number of bacteria in a certain population increases com according to a continuous compound exponential growth. So continuous compound exponential growth, very, very important here, right? Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so knowing that, once you see those words, what is the formula that you need to apply? Anyone? Uh, isn't it A equals PERT? Yeah, P and then raised to the RT. So I'm going to do the caret sign. Where's the caret sign? Oh, raised to the R times T. PERT. Okay. So knowing that <clears throat> the number of bacteria is increasing with a growth rate parameter of 9.1% per hour. What is 9.1%? What does that stand for? R. R. Okay. So here, we know that R, oops, R, and if you change it to a decimal, what is R equal to? 0 0.091. 0 0.091, right? So here, R is equal to 0 0.091. Is everyone okay with that? How many hours does it take for the size of the sample to double? So when I ask you how many hours, what are they asking you to for? for? Find what? Mm -hmm. Find time. So how many hours means to find the time? But then, so here we have, we have the R, we need to find T, but what is A and P? So it says how many hours does it take for the size of the sample to double? So when it says to double, what does that mean, to double? Can't you just put A like 2 and then P1? Good. Right. So what it means for something to double means that you the initial, so the initial amount is going to be, say the initial amount P is going to be 1, and then the final amount is going to be 2, right, to, for it to double. And it didn't have to be 1 and 2. It could be 100 and then 200 because you're doubling it, or if you chose P to be like two, then A could be four. So whatever it is that you're doubling, but I like to just use easy numbers. For something to double, I just use one, and then the final amount is two. Is everyone okay with that? So let's go ahead and let me give you some time to plug that into your, this formula and solve for T. So you find out the T is in the exponent, so because it's in the exponent, you're gonna have to log or natural log both sides. And I would recommend natural logging because we have an E. So I'll give you guys some time to work on that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this. So this is the what we found out. Um, Suzette, can you help me out? How do you create an equation with this? Um, I set it up as 2a mm -hmm. equals pe to 0 0.09t. 0.091t. T? Yeah. Um, oh, right. Sorry. So there's a few things I'd like to correct for you. So that's good, Suzette, that you have most of it here. So 0.091t. Um, the, the a is going to just be the number 2. And the P is just going to be the number one. So you actually don't need to write 2A or P. Okay. You could just write as 2 is equal to 1E to the point zero nine one T. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just to make it look more simpler. And, you, and we replace the A with a 2. Okay. Is everyone okay with that so far? All right. And then what next? Um, Angelica, help me out. What do I do next? Um, I'll divide the one uh -huh. to just get rid of that. So it's going to be uh, 2 equals e to the power of 0.091. Okay. And then after that, I will log it. Okay. And then it'll be natural log 2 mm -hmm. equals 0 0.091. I'm going to just write down natural log first. Oh. Um, yeah. I'm just, so then you skipped one step, but I see what you did. Okay. So once you natural log both sides, then you bring this out to the front, right? 
Okay, so it's so equals to point zero nine one T. And then times natural log E, which is just one. Okay, so natural log E is just one. And so then I would divide point zero nine one. Divide both sides by point zero nine one. Great. And what would you get with that? And then after that, I got seven point sixty two. Seven point six two. Were we rounding to the nearest hundredth place? Uh, good question. Um, That's what I got when I rounded. Okay, so we are rounding this to the nearest hundredth place. Yes. So you got, what is it, 7.62? Yeah. Great, 7.62, and this is, um, we talked, this problem was in hours, I believe, right? Yeah, how many hours? 7.62 hours. Great, good job. Does anyone have any questions on what Angelica did? So, because um, I know you guys will be going to other types of math after this class, this might not be your last math class. Um, on Alex, they don't make you put down units. Like if you just put 7.62 is correct. But um, did I record, start recording yet? Oh yeah, I did. Um, but on a normal math class, they would actually make sure that you write down units. Cause it could be 7.62 years or hours or minutes. So make sure you guys get, when you guys write it down, get used to putting down the units when you're dealing with word problems. So it's one of my beef with Alex that doesn't make you do that. But I want you guys to make sure you guys are aware of that when you get to other classes, other teachers, or even physics or chemistry or whatever, right? All right, any questions on this? All right, so without further ado, it's 11.48. I'm going to keep us going, rolling forward, and we could make, probably end a little bit early. Um, I'm going to do a quick screen share right now. Um, so... I'm going to go over what to expect for the exam next week. It's going to be very similar to what we did last time. So the exam is next Monday. You have a choice of either showing up between, okay, why did I put that time? I meant to put another time. Um, uh, where are you? Hmm. Okay. Not PowerPoint announcements. Okay, so not this, sorry. Okay. So it's actually not 9.30 to 12. I meant to say from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. or from 1 to 3.30 p.m. So those are the two options of times that you could show up for the exam. Um, the exam is only 15 questions. So actually, I don't think it'll take you guys an entire two and a half hours. Um, Again, the password will be given. Once you guys start, two chances, et cetera, the same thing. If a knowledge check pops up, let me know. Same story. Make sure you have your phone and your laptop and it's, um, and it's set up in a way where I can see you and your work. Um, same story. Once you're done with everything, you're going to message me. Let me know. And um, on the cover page of your work, you can have the honor pledge. And then once you're done, you can private chat with me and let me know you're finished and you're gonna send me a picture of your honor pledge as well as all of your work on Canvas. And once I receive on Canvas, then you're welcome to leave. And once the exam is done, then you guys can work on your handwritten corrections and just make sure you turn it into me before the next Zoom session. Um, and if you have questions on what the exam, um, when you're trying to correct it, you don't understand how to do something, make sure you talk to Garrett. And then for the following Wednesday, um, everything will be on conics and the worksheets are already on there. Does anyone have any questions about what to expect for the exam? I have a question uh, concerning the final exam. Uh huh. So is the final exam accumulative or is it just going to be on conics? Mm. The final exam will be accumulative of all the exams put together. Okay. So I'm basically going to take all the exams and put them together and um, it won't be as long as all that, but I'll, I'll cut it down, but that's what it'll be on. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, would there be a formula sheet that we can use? You know, I haven't decided yet. Give me one second. 
Yeah, you guys can play games for a bit. Um, I haven't decided yet. Um, I might. You know what? I think I, I think I might let you guys use a formal sheet. Yeah. Would you guys like a formal sheet? <laughs> it would be super helpful. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Uh, how would that How would that work if um, like you know how the whole camera is going to be looking at us? Would it be like considered? Would it be considered like cheating or? No. Um. So what I will have you guys do if I let you guys do the camera sheet or the 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 formal sheet is before the exam starts, I'm going to go through each person because I look at each person's camera to make sure I can see your stuff. I'm going to have you show me your formal sheet. Just show me. Okay, that'd be excellent. Just okay. The front and back of the, of the sheet and then just have it in front of you during the test. And I'll probably have it, I'll have it a uh, one sheet of paper front and back. Oh, that'd be awesome. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I will remember that. If I forget that next time, please let me know. But I'll go ahead and let you guys do that. Any other questions? Are we, are we going to review um, the other chapters since the beginning of the class? That's a good question. Do um, you mean a practice exam, a practice final? Yeah. Um, let me think. So Wednesday of the following, the last, sorry, let me go ahead and. So what's going on here? So Wednesday, the last Wednesday that we have class, um, you guys will be have doing it on conics. They'll probably do a conics quiz on the last class. Well, it depends on when we have the test. If we have a test on Wednesday, the final exam, then Monday I could use that Monday to do a, a practice final exam review with you guys. Yeah, so I would have time to do a practice final exam review on that Monday. And then Wednesday, we could have the the final exam. But for those of you guys that want to take it early on Monday, just let me know. But I think that's probably what I'll do. Monday will be the practice final session and then Wednesday will be the final itself. With, and you guys could have a review sheet. Great questions. As, as you guys are asking me questions, I'm thinking about it as well. Any other questions? No other questions? All right, at this point, I'm going to have, um, do, uh, Seth, do you wanna go or, or do the student spotlights wanna go? I have Sophia and Paloma up for the student spotlights. Who wants to do it first? I can go first, if you want me to. Okay. Um, do you want me to do a screen share? Um, yeah, do you wanna do your screen? Yeah, yeah, sure, one second. Okay, and Seth, do you mind this being recorded and shared or would you rather not? That doesn't matter to me. Okay, so I'll have it up then. Do you want me to show my face or anything, or are you just want me to, I can show the thing. Both, either or, yeah. You can screen okay, sure. show your face too. Okay, one second. And Paloma, I know you said you did not want to uh, have it recorded, that's fine. Um, Sophia, are you there? Yeah. Do you, are you okay with having your uh, spotlight being recorded and shared, or would you rather not? Uh, that's fine. That's fine, okay. All right, Seth, you're up. All right. Um, one second. Let me actually try to put this into. Yeah, blow it up a little bit. There you go. All right. So I did a Vegas trip for my presentation, and oops, sorry. So those two cars are are at a total of 228 or 282 miles uh, apart. One starts in Long Beach, California. The other one starts in Las Vegas, Nevada. The car starting in Long Beach is going 40 miles, 45 miles per hour. And the other car from Vegas is going 65 miles per hour. The two cars plan to meet each other. How long will it take? Uh, the next slide is pretty much the equation and formatting. Um, we set up the equation such as 45x plus 65x equals 282 total miles apart. We add the two miles per hour together for a total sum of 110. Then we set up the equation into 110x equals 282 miles apart. We divide both sides by 110. 
And that gives us, sorry, I can't see it for some kind of reason. Um, oops. Ah, uh, 2.6, 2.6 hours until they meet. And that's the end, yeah. Very cool, what made you decide to, um, to do this, to do it on Well, that? I always wanted to go to Vegas, but I never really got the chance. Uh, one, I'm not old enough to do half the things there, so I'll yeah. probably go later in life. Uh, yeah, that was just kind of the, one of the things I thought of. Very cool. Um, I like the, the first, the second slide that you had with the, the map, the visual of it too. Yeah, that would be kind of helpful if I displayed that. I think Vegas is opening up next month. I think. Yeah, most likely. Who knows? Yeah, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Cool. Then what happened to your, your group, group members? How did you go about doing your, this presentation by yourself? Um, I don't know. I, I messaged a few of them and they said they dropped the class. So, um, yeah. So I was like, well, I'm still going to try to get the credit. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, and that's where we're at now, I guess. Good. Good for you for um, still staying in the class despite some of your group members um, <laughs> leaving. Yep. Any questions or comments for Seth about his, his presentation? Awesome. Well, it seems like you're prepared. If you're meeting someone from Vegas and from Long Beach <laughs> meeting in the middle, you're ready to let them know how long it'll take. Yeah, so, thank you. <laughs> great, great job. Thank you. All righty. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and share screen to have um, Sophia. You sent it to, how did you send it to me? I forgot. Uh, I think I sent it um, in Canvas. Is it? Yeah. Oh, the weird thing is, is the pictures aren't showing up on that corner. Oh. I'm not sure why. Maybe I should try sharing it from my screen. Sure, do you have it on your screen? I have it on my phone. Will it let me share like that? Uh, I think so. Okay, I I'll try that. You sent it to me on via Canvas, right? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna try to... Yeah, it's not, it's just showing up really blurry. Or... Yeah, I think it's because it's pictures from my camera roll. So for some reason, it's not showing. Okay, so go ahead and share your screen on your phone. Is it showing up now? Yep. Okay. Um, so on the top left, uh, I put the Millican symbol because that's the high school I went to. Um, I've been going to LBCC for two years. Um, I'm majoring in communications right now, but <laughs> I'm honestly still not exactly sure what I want to do with that yet. Um, and then on the bottom left, um, those are pictures from San Diego from last summer. I don't really travel much because it's expensive, mm -hmm. but I wish I could travel more. But um, uh, that beach picture is called Sunset Cliffs, and it was this really pretty cliff. It, it's much higher up than it looks and it had it was just like the most beautiful beach and then um, next to it is it was called Balboa Park I think it's like um, it's not like it has some nature stuff but it has a lot of buildings and museums and stuff and I think that was like a stage or something and it had really pretty architecture and then on the top um, right those are just some of my favorite shows. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't sure what to put in this, but I like watching shows a lot, maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> and so those are just some of the ones I like. Um, and then uh, on the bottom right is, um, those are like four albums I really love. Um, one is by Rex Orange County, another by Harry Styles. The Doors, um, The Beatles, 
just a few things that I like. And that's pretty much it. Great. Any questions or comments for Sophia? Uh, who's your favorite character from the 70s show? <laughs> oh, that's so hard because I feel like they all bring something to the show. But, um, hmm. I would say I really like Donna and Hyde. I just feel like they're really cool and I wish I could be like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I like Fez. <laughs> oh yeah, he's really funny. <laughs> I see Anthony wrote on the chat that the 70s show is, is better than Friends. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. I definitely agree. And I like Friends a lot, but I like that 70s show more. Right. Awesome. <laughs> you weren't sure about being a communications major anymore? You might be changing? Yeah, because I'm not really sure. Like, I feel like the things I can do with that are a little limited so I don't really know what I would change it to but I'm trying to figure that out. Mm. Cool. Any other questions or comments for Sophia? Sophia are you in math 130 or 140? 140. 140 okay got it. Great so you could go ahead and stop sharing your screen and okay thank you. Pause this recording um, to have Paloma go up next. Chuck, you have a good